Instructions. The listening test is 45 minutes. There are tasks in the two parts of the listening test. Each task consists of a recorded video or audio scenario. The number of questions for each task also varies depending on the length of the video or audio. There are multiple choice questions for some listening tasks and shift to shift report for others. After you have completed all the tasks in the listening section, you may have some time remaining. You can use this time to navigate back to previous tasks to check your answers. Now get ready for the test and follow the instructions. Part 1. Tasks 1 to 4 instructions. You will listen to a short audio or video recorded conversation and answer the questions. While listening, select the correct answer from the options provided for each question. Task 1. Booking a follow-up appointment. You will watch a dialogue between a medical assistant and a patient. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions. Listen to the recording and select your answers. Good morning. This is Sarah. How may I assist you? Hi, Sarah. This is John. I need to book a follow-up appointment with my doctor. Hi, John. Sure thing. What's the reason for your follow-up appointment? I have been experiencing some pain in my lower back and it has been bothering me for a while now. I think I need to see my doctor and have it checked. I see. I'm sorry to hear that you're not feeling well. Let me check the doctor's schedule and we will try to find a convenient time for you. What day would you like to come in? I'm available next week, maybe on Tuesday or Thursday. Okay, let me check. I have an opening on Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. Would that work for you? Yes, that works for me. Great. I have scheduled you for a follow-up appointment with Dr. Lee on Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yes. Can you remind me what checkups I need to have done during the appointment? Sure. You will need to have your blood pressure, heart rate, and temperature checked. Also, Dr. Lee may order an x-ray or other imaging tests depending on your symptoms. Okay, got it. I will make sure to fast before the appointment so that I can have my blood work done if needed. That's a good idea. John, is there anything else you need to know before the appointment? No, that's all. Thanks for your help, Sarah. You're welcome, John. Before we end this call, can I confirm your phone number and email address? We will send you a reminder about your appointment. Sure. My phone number is 123-656-8890 and my email address is john at gmail.com. Thank you, John. We will send you a reminder a day or two before your appointment. Is there anything else we can assist you with? No, that's all. Thanks again. You're welcome, John. Take care and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Task 2. Patient Condition. 
You will watch a dialogue between a nurse and a family member. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions. Listen to the recording and select your answers. Good morning. This is Nurse Smith from the ICU. How may I assist you? Hi, this is Emily, the daughter of Mr. Johnson, who's admitted to your ICU. I was wondering if you could give me an update on his condition. Of course, Emily. Let me just pull up your father's chart here. Mr. Johnson is stable at the moment, but his condition is still critical. We're closely monitoring his vital signs, and he's receiving the necessary treatments to help him recover. Thank you for letting me know. Could you please tell me more about his treatment plan? I'm a bit worried about how he's doing. Sure. Your father is currently on a ventilator to help him breathe. He's also receiving medication to help manage his blood pressure and pain. We're doing everything we can to support his body as it fights off the infection. That sounds really intense. Has he shown any signs of improvement? It's still early, but we're hopeful. His oxygen levels have improved and he's responding well to the medication. However, we'll need to monitor him closely over the next few days to see how he's progressing. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Is there anything else I should be aware of? Yes, there are a few things. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, we're limiting visitors to the ICU. However, we do allow one family member to visit for a limited time each day. You'll need to schedule this in advance with our team. Also, Please keep in mind that your father's condition is still critical, so we ask that you avoid discussing his condition with other family members or on social media. I understand. Thank you for the reminder. Could you also let me know who the attending physician is in case I have any further questions? Of course. Dr. Williams is your father's attending physician, and he'll be able to answer any additional questions you may have. However, keep in mind that he's often in surgery or attending to other patients, so it may take some time for him to get back to you. In the meantime, you can always contact us here in the ICU if you have any urgent concerns. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Task 3. Patient Status Report. You will watch a dialogue between a nurse and a physician. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions.
Listen to the recording and select your answers. Good morning, Dr. Anderson. This is Nurse Taylor calling from the hospital. How are you doing today? Good morning, Nurse Taylor. I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. How can I assist you today? I wanted to discuss the health and checkup of one of your patients, Mr. Jameson. He has been admitted to the hospital for the past two days with complaints of chest pain and shortness of breath. Yes, I remember Mr. Jameson. What's his current status? He is stable, but his blood pressure and heart rate have been fluctuating. We have put him on oxygen support and have started him on a low dose of beta blockers. All right, that's good to hear. Can you tell me more about his medical history and any recent tests that have been done? Sure. Mr. Jameson has a history of hypertension and high cholesterol. He had an ECG and a chest x-ray yesterday which showed signs of myocardial ischemia. Hmm, that's concerning. Did you perform any other tests like a cardiac enzyme or a stress test? Yes, we did a cardiac enzyme test which came back positive for troponin T. However, we haven't performed a stress test yet. Okay, I would like to see the results of the tests and examine the patient myself. Can you send me the reports and schedule a visit for me tomorrow morning? Yes, of course. I will send you the reports and schedule the visit for 9 a.m. tomorrow. Thank you, Nurse Taylor. Also, please make sure to monitor Mr. Jameson's vital signs regularly and keep me updated on any changes. Sure, I will keep you informed. By the way, I wanted to discuss another patient with you, Mrs. Evans. She has been experiencing severe joint pain and stiffness for the past week. Yes, I remember Mrs. Evans. What's her current status? We have performed a few tests, including a rheumatoid factor test, which came back positive. We have started her on NSAIDs and referred her to a rheumatologist for further evaluation. That's good to hear. I will follow up with the rheumatologist and adjust the treatment plan accordingly. All right, thank you, Dr. Anderson. Is there anything else you would like me to inform you about? No, that's all for now. Thank you for your help, Nurse Taylor. Have a good day. You too, Dr. Anderson. Take care. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Task 4. Call for advice. You will hear a dialogue between a nurse and a physician. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions. Listen to the recording and select your answers. Good morning, Dr. Jones. This is Nurse Rachel from St. Mary's Hospital. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. How can I help you today? I am calling about one of our patients, Mr. William Smith. He was admitted a few days ago with pneumonia and is currently being treated with antibiotics. His condition has improved, but he is still experiencing some discomfort, and we were hoping to get your advice on his ongoing care. Sure, I'll do my best to help. Can you tell me more about his symptoms and what medications he's currently taking? Mr. Smith is complaining of chest pain and shortness of breath. He's currently taking azithromycin and ceftriaxone for his pneumonia, as well as paracetamol for his pain. We're monitoring his oxygen saturation levels and he's currently at 93% on room air. Okay, let me take a look at his chart. Have you done any additional tests or imaging since his admission? Yes, we did a chest x-ray on admission, which showed some consolidation in his left lung. 
We repeated the x-ray yesterday and there was some improvement but still some residual consolidation. We've also done some blood work which shows an elevated white blood cell count and CRP. Based on what you're telling me, it sounds like Mr. Smith is responding well to the antibiotics, but may still have some residual inflammation in his lungs. I would recommend continuing the antibiotics for at least another three, five days, and monitoring his oxygen saturation levels closely. If his levels drop below 90%, we may need to consider supplemental oxygen or other interventions. We should also consider doing another chest x-ray in a few days to see how he's progressing. That makes sense. We've also been monitoring his vital signs regularly and he's been stable overall. Would you recommend any additional pain management or respiratory therapies? Given his ongoing chest pain, I would recommend adding a short-acting bronchodilator like albuterol to his regimen to help relieve any bronchospasm. You could also consider using an incentive spirometer to help him take deep breaths and clear any secretions from his lungs. As for pain management, you could consider increasing his paracetamol dose or adding a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug like ibuprofen if he's not already on it. That's great advice. Thank you so much. Is there anything else we should be monitoring or any red flags we should watch out for? Yes. It's always important to monitor for any signs of worsening pneumonia or complications like sepsis. Watch for any increasing fever, worsening cough, or any changes in mental status. If he develops any of these symptoms, or if his oxygen saturation drops significantly, we may need to consider transferring him to the ICU for closer monitoring. Understood. Thank you so much for your time and advice, Dr. Jones. We'll make sure to keep a close eye on Mr. Smith and follow your recommendations. You're welcome, Nurse Rachel. Keep me updated on his progress and let me know if there are any other concerns. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Part 2. Tasks 5 Instructions. Listen to the report and dialogue and circle the correct answers as you listen. Task 5A. Shift to Shift Report. As you listen to the Shift to Shift Report, circle the best choice for each room and patient. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions on the chart before the audio begins. Listen to the recording and select your answers. This is the evening shift report for Thursday, May 9th, room number 271. Mr. Smith is a 65-year-old male who has been admitted to the hospital with acute chest pain. He has a history of hypertension and high cholesterol levels. He is currently undergoing tests to determine the cause of his chest pain. Mr. Smith is a very polite and cooperative patient. He is always willing to follow the instructions given by the nursing staff and takes his medication regularly. He is also very concerned about his health and asks many questions about his condition. His wife visits him every day and is very supportive. She provides him with home-cooked meals and assists him with his personal care needs. Room numbered 274. 
Miss Rodriguez is a 45-year-old female who has been admitted to the hospital with a severe allergic reaction. She has a history of allergies to peanuts and seafood, and it is suspected that she may have consumed one of these allergens accidentally. Miss Rodriguez is very anxious and scared due to her condition. She is constantly worried about her breathing and is in distress. She is also very sensitive to touch and prefers minimal contact. Her husband visits her daily and is very supportive. He brings her favorite books and magazines to help distract her from her condition. Room number 283. Mr. Johnson is a 78-year-old male who has been admitted to the hospital with pneumonia. He has a history of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, and is currently receiving oxygen therapy. Mr. Johnson is a friendly and talkative patient who enjoys socializing with the nursing staff. He is very compliant with his medication regimen and is always willing to try new treatments. His daughter visits him every day and is very attentive to his needs. She brings him his favorite snacks and reads to him to help him relax. Room num 289. Mrs. Lee is a 62-year-old female who has been admitted to the hospital with a fractured hip. She fell down the stairs in her home and requires surgery to repair the injury. Mrs. Lee is in significant pain and discomfort due to her injury. She is unable to move independently and requires assistance with all of her daily activities. Her son visits her every day and is very helpful. He assists her with her physical therapy exercises and helps her to get comfortable in her bed. Room number 392. Mr. Patel is a 32-year-old male who has been admitted to the hospital with a severe case of influenza. He is currently receiving antiviral medication and is on oxygen therapy. Mr. Patel is very weak and fatigued due to his condition. He is unable to talk for extended periods and prefers minimal contact. His wife visits him daily and is very supportive. She brings him his favorite comfort food and spends time talking to him. Room 394. Miss Chen is a 55-year-old female who has been admitted to the hospital with severe abdominal pain. She is currently undergoing tests to determine the cause of her pain. Miss Chen is in significant pain and discomfort. She is very anxious and worried about her condition and is constantly asking the nursing staff for updates. Her sister visits her every day and is very attentive to her needs. She brings her a variety of Chinese herbal remedies to help with her pain and spends time talking to her to help her relax. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Task 5B, Shift to Shift Report. Now, listen to the Shift to Shift Report again and circle the best choice for each room and patient. This time, you will need to listen for different details. Listen to the recording and select your answers. This is the evening shift report for Thursday, May 9th. Room num 271. Mr. Smith is a 65-year-old male who has been admitted to the hospital with acute chest pain. He has a history of hypertension and high cholesterol levels. He is currently undergoing tests to determine the cause of his chest pain. Mr. Smith is a very polite and cooperative patient. 
He is always willing to follow the instructions given by the nursing staff and takes his medication regularly. He is also very concerned about his health and asks many questions about his condition. His wife visits him every day and is very supportive. She provides him with home-cooked meals and assists him with his personal care needs. Room numbered 274. Miss Rodriguez is a 45-year-old female who has been admitted to the hospital with a severe allergic reaction. She has a history of allergies to peanuts and seafood, and it is suspected that she may have consumed one of these allergens accidentally. Miss Rodriguez is very anxious and scared due to her condition. She is constantly worried about her breathing and is in distress. She is also very sensitive to touch and prefers minimal contact. Her husband visits her daily and is very supportive. He brings her favorite books and magazines to help distract her from her condition. Room number 283. Mr. Johnson is a 78-year-old male who has been admitted to the hospital with pneumonia. He has a history of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, and is currently receiving oxygen therapy. Mr. Johnson is a friendly and talkative patient who enjoys socializing with the nursing staff. He is very compliant with his medication regimen and is always willing to try new treatments. His daughter visits him every day and is very attentive to his needs. She brings him his favorite snacks and reads to him to help him relax. Room num 289. Mrs. Lee is a 62-year-old female who has been admitted to the hospital with a fractured hip. She fell down the stairs in her home and requires surgery to repair the injury. Mrs. Lee is in significant pain and discomfort due to her injury. She is unable to move independently and requires assistance with all of her daily activities. Her son visits her every day and is very helpful. He assists her with her physical therapy exercises and helps her to get comfortable in her bed. Room number 392. Mr. Patel is a 32-year-old male who has been admitted to the hospital with a severe case of influenza. He is currently receiving antiviral medication and is on oxygen therapy. Mr. Patel is very weak and fatigued due to his condition. He is unable to talk for extended periods and prefers minimal contact. His wife visits him daily and is very supportive. She brings him his favorite comfort food and spends time talking to him. Room 394. Miss Chen is a 55-year-old female who has been admitted to the hospital with severe abdominal pain. She is currently undergoing tests to determine the cause of her pain. Miss Chen is in significant pain and discomfort. She is very anxious and worried about her condition and is constantly asking the nursing staff for updates. Her sister visits her every day and is very attentive to her needs. She brings her a variety of Chinese herbal remedies to help with her pain and spends time talking to her to help her relax. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers.